five gears in the back of the Landy. We're going for a dive. It could be very, very bad this today. It's been a storm all week, so we're going to do a little recce first. We might get the drone up and have a look down over the coast, see if there's any visibility at all. We're going to get in somewhere, see if we can't find something for dinner. Conversion I did myself about 10 years ago. So the engine's about 1991, the car itself is about 1985. She's beautiful. She's great. Absolutely great. What are you buying, Buckley? <laughs> Have we got my wings back? Now look at that. Yeah. That's pitch of perfect, that is ready. What's pitch of perfect? Climbed up on top of the point here to have a look down, see if there's any visibility at all. Might just put the drone up and see if we can find any clarity. All we need is a couple of meters and we can find some scallops, maybe a lobster. It looks doable actually. brilliant but you can see see this boulder here that boulder is probably a couple of meters below you know it's gonna be really bad visibility and you know it's gonna be a challenge you know see what we can find so we've landed there's a bit of a surge I'm gonna be honest those conditions those conditions are awful. So here you can see my setup for shore diving for shellfish. I use a bodyboard with a mesh bag on top. I can use it to store the catch, but also carry things like hot drinks and sandwiches. And as predicted, the viz is pretty bad. You can see, especially close to the shore, where it's really stirred up, it's really cloudy and pretty awful. Here's a tip as well for short viz diving. I put the torch on the end of my float line so I can use it to mark any lobster holes um, that I find. But quite early on I'm diving down to this rocky area and I see this beautiful crevice along the edge of the rock which I can't help but have a look in. Lo and behold there's a lobster tail. Lobsters absolutely hate having things behind them so all it takes is just to dangle the torch down into that hole and out he comes the other side. Now the minimum size um, for lobsters in Devon, the carapace needs to be nine centimeters. And this one was just over, but I find those kinds of lobsters just way too small, personally, so I, I let them go. Yeah, this one is the table, okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I'll try the light. Do you want to have a go at crawling on that? So, yep, Barkley says he's found a much better sized table lobster in a crevice. So, I take the hook, we go down, and this lobster is actually surprisingly easy to get. This is really typical of the kind of lobster you're about to see. As you can see, she's got that wide flared tail with loads of eggs she's carrying. Buried females are typically quite easy lobsters to catch. They're quite lethargic 
and they often hide in quite silly places. But we need to take good care of her and she goes right back in the hole she came from. We carry on the hunt and just crevice after crevice is harbouring lobsters close to the minimum size, again like this one. This one gives me no chance but I can see at a glance it's just a little bit small. There's some beautiful caves in this area that often hold bigger lobsters, especially in the summer, but on this occasion they were empty. Just on the outside of the cave though, you can see here's another minimum sized lobster I'm having a play with. I pulled him out just to have a closer look, but again, this one's just a bit small, so he goes back as well. Well, we've been lobstering for a good few hours, but a little bit demoralized actually. We pulled out so many. We've probably seen 10 or 15 lobsters and they've all just ended up being a bit too small. The ones that were of size were, were buried females, so they had to go back. So yeah, we really, really tried hard, but today it didn't pay off. So we're just gonna fin out here. We saw a lot of scallop shells. In, uh, in where we were diving, empty scallop shells. So we're just gonna push out a bit, see if we can find some scallops for supper. swim back. Something I've noticed about the scallops from the location we were diving at today, I don't know if you can see, but they're a much, a completely different colour to the spot we usually get them from. At this location they're much, much brighter. Almost got some, a lot more yellows in. Have you noticed that, Barkley? Yes. Yeah. A they're completely cleaner. different colour. They're, they're really vibrant. Mm. Really beautiful. Look at the variation on the shell. They've got all sorts of different pigments in. It's really, really interesting. Um, but a couple of facts that may, may find useful. The minimum size is 10 centimeters. Um, so ours were an average of about 12 today, I noticed. They ranged actually from 10 centimeters to 14 centimeters. Um, so good, healthy sizes. Another point to make is that uh, scallops can only be collected in Devon here um, in the daytime. You cannot collect them from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. so be careful. Um, and, uh, always take care of the conservation measures in place in your area. Down to the hatch. Here we go. 
in the taste, not the presentation. Today was great fun. Really, really good fun. Yeah. Today was really about you know getting in the sea, having some fun whilst the visibility was terrible. When it turned out to be about three meters, two to three meters. So there was plenty of space, plenty of vision to be able to do lobsters and shellfish. So it's what we targeted. It's what you can target when the visibility is short and it's still great fun. Thank you, Chef Barkley, for cooking a delicious meal. Thank you, and, Captain. Um, yeah, we'll see you at the next episode. Cheers. What do you think, George? Yeah, do you know what they are? Yeah. What are they? Uh, Chloe, can you teach George what they are? Have the scallops. Scallops. Can you say scallop, George? Scallops. Good boy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. We're going to have a feast, Georgie boy. Yeah. You can stay away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> This one won't open. This one's a clever one. He's a clever one, George. He's, he's, a, he's a clever, clever scholar. Look at mummy.